so I am going to create a new Angular project using ng new. Let's call this sign in with Google. So once I have an application created via Angular CLI, I will get rid of the boilerplate code that I don't need. So I will go to my uh, app component HTML to remove this thing which I don't need. Then I will create a new component which will be my uh, login page. So I want to show a login page and then I want to give option to sign in with the Google. So I'll generate a new component. Let's call this login. And uh, I need one more component. Uh, that component basically will be used once the user is logged in. Then I want to redirect to the component. So I will call that dashboard. So here in my case, if a user login successfully, he will be navigated to a dashboard. And if there is any error, then uh, he will be still on the login page, but I will show some warning or some error that the login was unsuccessful or something like that. Okay, so first thing I will uh, include this app login in my app component HTML so that it is available in the DOM. So just paste this control space and it is available there. Now I need to add the code inside this login component for sign in with Google button. So similarly, I created a error component where I want to show the error if user has not been logged in successfully. I can also do this on the login page itself, but there I would need to pass some data to a login page, the data that the message where I would pass in that uh, login was not successful because of some reason, but I would keep it simple for this example and would show an error message on a separate page. Then I will go to HTML of the dashboard and there simply I will put this HTML text uh, where I will tell user that they are logged in successfully. And uh, this is a dashboard content that you can put whatever you want. It's like a landing page where your user will come after they successfully log in. Then uh, next thing I need to do is to create a routes in my application because I want to uh, tell Angular that whenever whatever path, uh, whatever URL user gives in a browser, I want to tell Angular that which component to route to. So I will just import these three components that I have just created and create a route. So if it's a login, then I want to uh, render a login component. If it's a dashboard, then I want to uh, navigate user to a dashboard and if it's an error then it will go to an error component in the error component I simply have a simple message which says that there is a error error logging in a user then after having these routes I will go to my uh, app component HTML and there I will add a router outlet router outlet we need the router outlet in order to render the content inside a route whatever route is match so after having this we basically have a setup uh, of an angular application that we need we also need uh, some backend where uh, we want to listen to the request. Uh, I'll come to that part. But before that, I want to show you how you can create a Google's OAuth client ID. So for that, I will take you to my Google Developer Console page. So this is the documentation of Google developers.google.com identity protocol OAuth 2. There you will find all the details about how to set up this. There specifically about the web application they have this uh, separate page where they have given the details uh, step how to set up the authentication i have given all the links in the description so that you will find what exactly uh, the documentation is where it is present and uh, you can refer along with the source code of course as i do in every my tutorial so in order to set up the google api client id you need to create a project so you need to come to console.cloud.google.com and uh, this is the console basically if you have to create any uh, uh, client ID or any OAuth or any other cloud specific things if you need to create you do that to the console.cloud so you need to log in here with your Google profile with the Google account and uh, there it shows the active projects that you have so currently I have this one signing demo I created but for sake of this tutorial I will show you how you can create a new project from uh, scratch so I'll simply uh, uh, go to any project and uh, there I have option to select a project and uh, uh, option to create a new project so i'll create a new project uh so google allows uh some i think 13 it has a quota of 13 projects so i have already created two of them and with this i i have uh, 10 projects remaining so it allows you it allows only 13 projects to be created in a specific time so i'll create a angular sign in demo i don't want to select any location because uh, i am not creating this for any organization this is just for a simple project just some demonstration so I'll create angular sign in demo and uh, once I have it, I will uh, select that project and after selecting a project, it shows that we are working on angular sign in. Okay. So after having this, what I need to do is I uh, need to create a Google client ID, Google OAuth to client ID. So for creating a Google API client ID, as it is mentioned in the documentation of Google, uh, we need to go to API console. So if I go to a API console, 
it will uh, show me what project I have there and a couple of options I'll have available on the left side. So I have the Angular sign-in demo, a project I just created a moment back and uh, I want to create a credential for the same. So what I will do is go to the credential and inside a credential, I will click on a create credential. And uh, here I want OAuth client ID, which basically we use for accessing a user's data. There are other options like also service account enable server to server and other. Yeah, so in this case, we'll create a OAuth client ID. We just need a login mechanism. So we'll click on the OAuth client ID and in order to create a OAuth client ID, I need to configure consent screen. So I'll configure consent screen where I need to provide some basic details about my application. So my user type is external, I would say, because uh, with the internal and external, we specify which at the rate uh, email IDs we want to allow. So for this tutorial, I want to allow every Google account. Uh, if I want to restrict that to only specific user, let's say I'm working in an Apple and I want to allow only at the rate apple.com email IDs, then I would choose an internal and then in that case, it would ask uh, for other details, but I have not selected any organization. That's why it is not allowing me to uh, select that option. So I'll choose external for this example. I will simply call the uh, name of this application as Angular sign-in demo. Uh, then the support email, I can give my email. Then the app logo, I will simply upload a app logo that I have. Then app domain homepage. So for this example, I'm running this on the local host. If you have a domain name associated, you can uh, give that domain name link here. Uh, remaining are the optional things that you can specify even if you don't specify there is no issue i'll give the developer contact information which is mandatory and we'll say save and continue so you can see here uh, the scope you can also define a scope if you want to restrict a scope that is in terms of the quest access of highly user sensitive data what data you want to make available so in this case we are simply using this for authentication we don't need any data but if you need a data like uh, a username and the email id of a logged in person then you can add that scope here that which uh, data you want to be available as a response of a successful login then i will say say save and continue test user i don't want any test user for now so we'll simply skip it in the summary and uh, we'll uh, create this after creating this it will navigate us back to uh, our application so after having that i will i have the oauth consent screen set up now i have oauth consent screen configured so i will create a credential so uh, let's so for this example uh, we have angular which is a web application that's why i'm selecting application type as a web application if you have something of android or the ios application tv desktop application or the chrome extension you're developing you would choose this option so I'll simply go with a web application. Let me give the same name again, Angular sign-in demo. Then I will add a URI. So we need to add the URI. This is important because this is what help us to, uh, you know, decide from which origin the request will come. So I'll say HTTP local host 4200. And uh, technically this will be your URL, whatever you have. If you have any uh, domain associated with your application, you can add that. And uh, you need to add or two URIs here. If in this example, I'm running this on the 4200 port, that's why I specified the 4200 port specifically. But I also need, need to give a, a URI of my domain, so that is localhost. So I'll add a localhost 4200 and the localhost two URIs, and then authorize redirect URI. Uh, this is so this we need to provide. This is compulsory because uh, once your login happens successfully. Uh, you need to specify that at which URL you want your user to navigate it. So in my example, if you remember, if my uh, authentication is successful, if my login is successful, then I want to navigate user to a dashboard. So for the same reason, I would add localhost slash dashboard here in the redirect URI. So with this, I think I am good. I will create this. And as it says, it may take five minutes uh, to reflect the changes and I get a message which says that OAuth is created and uh, then I have the things which are client ID, client secret, all of those things. So now we have a OAuth 2.0 client ID created. Next thing is we need to integrate that in our Angular application. So to integrate OAuth 2 client ID calls in uh, any web application, there was a library which was initially created by uh, Google, which is types gapi.auth2 and that was being used very heavily as you can see on the npm js that this is the library uh, what was being used but there is a twist with this this library was being used uh, heavily but recently google has announced that they will they are going to deprecate this by march 31 2023 and uh, as an alternative to this they have a better uh, mention about they have explained about how to use that new way in their uh, setup documentation 
So this was an old way and since they are going to deprecate it soon, I'm not going to talk about it, but just from the history perspective to know this was a one way that you could do so. So now how to do that with a new way uh, as here in the Google documentation, they have mentioned a setup and uh, there is a, if you go to a next step, which is a load client library. So what I need to do is I need to copy this and I need to put this script somewhere in my Angular code. So in Angular, we have the script usually present in uh, index HTML if I have any script to load I keep that in the index HTML you can even download the script if you don't want to make a uh, request to accounts.google.com always you can download this and put it in your in your assets so in my index HTML I will simply copy that script SRC so that the script is available now I have imported a script next thing uh, next thing I need to do is to generate an integration code so for that uh, Google has provided a very interactive UI where it has become a very easy to do this so uh, we need to provide a Google client ID and from where I'll get it so here is my client ID on my OAuth 2 client ID so I'll copy that we'll, uh, we'll come to this page and uh, we'll paste my client ID then data context which uh, for what, what purpose I'm going to use this or what is a context I need a sign in sign up for the use if so login URI this is the listener URI at which I want uh, my application to listen and get that data so in the sign in I don't have any data written but if I say use then it uh, will return some data back to login URI I'll provide a, a local host URI and uh, for the same purpose I need to also create a backend server so I'll show you uh, how you can create a backend uh, server so i'll provide a localhost 3000 slash api slash login as a uri after providing this login uri here it means that once my uh, login request is processed by google this is the uri at which or this is the uh, endpoint at which a response will be listened so that means i need to have this 3000 point running on my localhost so what i did here is i created a backend server and uh, for creating a backend server i am using this express so i have installed the express if you don't know about how to create express server i have a separate uh, detailed tutorial about it where i have explained how to create an express server and how you can uh, render a angular application but in this example we just need an express server so i have installed the express library using npm install express and uh, what i'm doing is i'm running the express application on the port number 3000 and uh, here i have defined a middleware which is api login and if uh, api login is hit then uh, i need to redirect user to this dashboard uh, page which is basically login successful page in our case this is what mapped here so if i go to 3000 slash api login this will invoke this this middleware and uh, inside a code present in, inside it will get executed so i'll simply create it then i will go next here and uh, there we have the options to customize how you how we want it to look so magician specifying this customization i'll click on the get code and there i have a code available so i will simply copy this code and go to and go to my vs code and in my vs code under a login page in the view part of a login i'll paste this code so i will simply copy this and we'll put it here so that the code is available and uh, i will go to my localhost 4200 now so i'm in the browser and i can see there is nothing loaded uh, that is probably because i don't have a route for the empty if i have an empty path in my url then i simply want to show a login component which is like a default landing page so now i can see the button is available i provide this i will uh, i will log in quickly uh, once i uh, log in here it asks that you want to sign into this application as my username so this is a name that we provided in the our uh, google console because we created a project with this name and uh, there it asks for the cancel or confirm if i say confirm then my login is successful and now two things happened here behind the scene after i gave a consent from here once i acknowledged to con uh, once i did a confirmation there on the pop-up it made a hit to my backend and uh, in a backend you can see that i had the backend running which so uh, it came to a slash API login on the 3000 port and uh, once I have that uh, it just console log the request body which was empty in this case which I received from the Google uh, from the Google API then it redirected to a 4200 dashboard which is my angular page so that's why you can see that uh, once a successful login happened it has logged it has navigated me to a dashboard page where I can see user logged in successfully message so once we have a login demonstrated I will simply add a few more fields in uh, uh, login page so that to uh, make it more good looking by the way all the source code of this example is present on my github a link to my source code you will find in the description of this video so i'll simply add a label 
of username and another for the password where I will simply want to accept a username and password and want to show a simple login screen. This is the BR type for that. I have created a class login form. We'll simply add some uh, CSS to that so that it will look good. And uh, with that, I think it should show me a login form. And on my uh, dashboard page, I have also just shown a user logged in successfully message. So I'll go to UI and see how it looks. I will go to a login and uh, with a new to form field added, it should look uh, different. There we go. I think I, uh, so I can see I have a simple username and password and uh, sign in with Google option. If I click on it, it still works. So this was a simple example or demonstration example that how you can uh, play around with a Google sign in and how you can implement a sign in with a Google on any form in your Angular application. There are a lot of customization. Of course, you can do if you go to a, a documentation of developers.google.com. So that's all for this video. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching.